Paul said in um, Corinthians, is I desire to see you that I might impact on you spiritual gift. The true directions of the anointing does not come through laying of hands but by the spoken words. The Bible tells us in Acts 10 38 that our God anointed Jesus. The word how is a wow word. It's like saying, Can you imagine? But we never heard where God laid his hands on him. We only saw at the point of his baptism, the Bible said, and a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. So the true release, because the anointing simply means a young from an anointed man. Spiritual aeons. So when you listen to the words of an anointed man, the aeons from that words begin to drop in your spirit. Suddenly you thought you were not in the service. But a few years you find yourself in a situation and the thing you learned stood up to answer for you. That's what the Bible says is in Isaiah 20, 10, 20, 20. It said, even though I will give you the bread of affliction, I will not take your teachers away from you. You will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way to go. Do we understand that? So every privilege, the Bible is speaking in John 6, 63. He said, the words I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. Ezekiel 2, 2. He said, as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. That's the power of his word. When that word is placed upon the leaves of an anointed man, it can turn your life completely around for good. Have you discovered in scripture that the Bible says, and um, Elijah met a young man called Elisha and had discussions with him, taught him, put his cloak or mantle on him, and never gave him a kind of important detail that God gave to Elijah. What's that detail? God said to Elijah, go put yourself to, to together. I will anoint three men, Azal, Jehu, and Elisha. He that escaped the sword of Elisha will not escape the sword of Azal. He that escaped the sword of Azal will not escape the sword of who? Jehu. And Elisha was not privy to that information. But at the death of Elijah, we saw Elisha taking up a mandate to go kill Jehu. Who told him? Have you not read in your Bible that one time in Acts chapter 8, they were killing a young man called Stephen? Have you not read that? And then a young man by the side called Saul collected a cloth from Stephen and held it and said, Stone him! Stone him! He didn't know that that cloth was an empowerment. The next day, because of that cloth of Stephen on him, the heavens were opened. Be careful when you stand in the presence of an anointed man. Do we understand that? You know why I said this? was the first line and Pastor Tango started from how you can get so familiar with God's word and if you would just say it, let's just keep writing let's just write and that's all no the word does something to your spirit the Bible says in Acts 20 32 and of the word of God that is able to what build you and then give you what an inheritance among the saints so before you can get inheritances from God you must be built from God's word because that inheritance must sit on a structure do we understand that? Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. I'm speaking on the message titled Wasters. Wasters. John chapter 6, verse 12. This was when Jesus multiplied the bread and fishes, and then he fed um, 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 5,000 um, men unto his disciples. Gather up the fragment that remain that nothing be lost. Gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost by the vantage point of this event and encounter Jesus left a principle that it is expedient upon believers to avoid waste he just performed the miracle he could have as well just said throw the rest since it came by the way of what a miracle but it is expedient upon believers that you minimize waste at all possible means what is waste means to use ineffect effectively or inappropriately when you use something ineffectively or inefficiently or inappropriately then you are wasting such a thing number two when you cause something to grow thin you cause it to grow weak or to wear out then we call you a waster when you have the anointing 
the capability, capacity to cause something to grow thin, to wear out or to grow weak, then we say you are what? A waster. If someone brings you into their company, suddenly that business begins to go down. You are a waster. He or she just employed a waster. If someone brings you into their life by the vantage point of a relationship, and suddenly everything about their life begins to turn upside down, it goes down. Better you left them worse than you met them. Then you're a waster. You just encounter the waster. Together. So you must do everything in your capacity. God is not a waster of resources. And he expects us to be like him. There is nothing you have that is your own. That's the first understanding you must carry. John 3.27 He said, no man has received anything except it be given to him from where above there is nothing you have that is your own everything in your hand you are just a steward of every resources god gives you by the vantage point of a privilege the family you are born into the things you have the clothes you have the target and material you are not the true owner of it he by his own divine will gave you the ability to have them that's what john 3 27 was saying John 3 27 give me that scripture he said and John answered and said a man can receive nothing not some things except it be given to him from where from above so it is expedient enough that we avoid being wasteful there is no future God blesses a man he considers the ability of the man to manage things that's why the Bible says, and he in Matthew chapter 25, he called to himself a man who traveled to a journey to a country. And he called to himself three servants. And he gave them gifts according to their capacity to manage, not their zeal for it. Many of us want strange dimensions of wisdom. Many of us want strange dimensions of the operations of the anointing. But we have no better capacity to manage it. You want to carry the kind of grace I carry? But you don't have capacity. You don't. Few days before I came here, one of my daughters was spiritually attacked. Two, I think two, nine years about. Because my working hours is night. I learned it from Jesus, Luke 21, 37. The Bible says during the day he goes about in the temple. And by night he goes to the secret place to pray. That's my lifestyle. That's my design. That's how we manage the oil on our life. At that exact hour, she when I picked the phone. I was husband, I said, what's the problem? I said, this is a life and death situation. And I picked the phone. I said, Satan, you can't touch my child. I am awake. Out of her. And that's all. Imagine if I couldn't pick at that point in time. So you can't pray for more from God without building capacity to manage it only between january and august you have changed 20 phones not because you have the financial resources but because of your inability to manage everything around your life look like your inside if i check your phone you have used rubber ring that's it means your life that's how you have rubber ring it too everything about your life is patching you have patched your destiny. The way I see your clothing, it can tell me your internal person. Build capacity to manage. Are we getting blessed? Are we following? Everything God gives to you is an investment. And one thing about our creator is that he always wants a return on his investment. As a good steward. Remember when he came back, he asked the last one who had one talent. I said, where's my interest? And the guy said, I, I just went and just hid it somewhere. He said, no. I didn't even have a problem. He would have even kept it in the bank. No matter the interest, I would have still appreciated it. So it doesn't matter how small the interest is, it must be, there must be interest. So everything in your hand, no matter how little it is, must multiply, must grow, must become better than you have it. You people gave you their laptop you begged them that you want to use their laptop to do a work when they, it came back it was rope you used to tie the screen and the keyboard like this you are not on that spiritual attack you are just a waster 
So develop yourself to fight waste. Waste you create today will become the emptiness you see in your future. When you hate waste, prosperity will locate you. Are we getting blessed? Listen, even in your use of food, I am very strict to the dealings and the operation in my house because I understand the frugality of life. When you see great men, you think they are wasters. No! The reason why they become great is the ability to manage this. Even the food you carry and throw away, you know somebody needs that to survive? It's not a sign that you are a big man. It's just a sign that you are stupid. You buy clothes. You are still in, in 100 level. You bought clothes that you are keeping it when you give birth. Your daughter will wear. How will she look like by then? You know you don't need that. You are a waster. You are, you are in an environment where you go to class from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And you buy bought plasma TV to watch what? You want to impress ladies when they come to your house. You are a waster. Some of you are carrying a Brazilian air. In, that is a landed property on a Nigerian head that don't have sense. Some of you have four phones. Two on your right hand, two on your left hand. Who is calling you? Please ask your neighbor who is calling you. Things you must steward well and avoid wastage of. Number one, your life. You must understand that life is a gift. So it's well. Some of you will not know the value of life until you see yourself at the verge of eternity and life leaving you. Then you will know that this life you were given is a gift. You have to steward it well. You can't live your life anyhow. You can't live your life without a sense of destiny. You can't live your life without a sense of direction. Stop saying it's my life. No! You were given and the one who gave you can require of it at any point in time. The only way you can say is your life. When people try to correct you, say, it's my life, I have my life to live it where I live. Oh, really? Did you bring, give yourself that life? So why brag of a life you have no control over? So how do you steward your life well? Number one, by living your life for God. Living your life for God. The day you were born into this earth, you began to exist. The day you become born again, you begin to live. The day you discover the purpose of your existence, you begin to what? Impact. When your parents gave birth to you, you were existing. When you discover the reason why God brought you, you found life. Then when you fulfill that reason, then you live an impactful life. So that's how you steward your life. You discover the reason why God gave you bread. You live a life of purpose. You wake up each day with that sense of destiny and direction. Don't live your life anyhow. You are getting old. Tell your neighbor you are getting old. Number two. Steward your words. Proverbs 14 verse 7. Give me that scripture. Steward your words. He said, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceived not in him the leaves of knowledge. Let your words carry profit and don't speak further to a man who constantly despises your instructions. I learned that very late in life. That's when people are time wasters. They hang around your life as spiritual sons and daughters and learn nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You see no change in their life them off your time your words are precious you give them instructions they go directly against it and do what they like the Bible says, go away from such kind of people that shows no value for your words number three your money you must steward it well Proverbs 13 and verse 23. The Bible says there is more tillage in the dwelling of the poor, but the foolish man destroyeth it for want of knowledge. Proverbs 13, 23. There is much food in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of what? Judgment. You are not poor, you are just stupid. Two things.
things you must understand about money. Number one, it must be spent on what you need. Number two, it must be spent according to your level. Now, how do I look at the kind of car Bishop Edepo will drive now and I'm under pressure to go and buy it? Go through life at your level. When you carry yourself to a point where God has not lifted you up to, you will struggle to survive there. That's what is killing many. Do people all of you now? You come and tell us there's one business that should bring three people. Live life at your level. Defeat shame. You are not under any form of what pressure. What you don't have today, you have it tomorrow. Hear what God said to me one time. He says, "Son, you lack the most will be what you will have the most." You will get to a point you are tired of those things you desire right now. Money, you will be tired. Cars, houses, you will be so tired of it. But grow through life one level at what? A time. You are under pressure. When you get to live life under pressure, you will live a life that is expensive. Right? And a life of what? Deceit. Who cannot accept you for who you are is not qualified to be your life. I repeat what I said. Who cannot accept you for who you are is not qualified to live in your life. You can't be living your life in 2023 for people. Because at the end of the day, they don't send you. Listen, if you die now, that's when you know how women can be so forgotten. Two weeks, I give you two weeks. They're forgotten. People are living their life. They will go to work as if nobody died. And you are under pressure every day just to make them happy at the detriment of your own joy and fulfillment in life. Something is wrong with you. Learn to steward it well. Steward revelations and truth. You come to church, you listen to sermons, and you do nothing about them. Look at what Proverbs 12 27 said. He said, Proverbs 12 12 27. Give me that scripture. A diligent man roasted that, that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent what you came to service to do today is hunting. You came to hunt game meat, precious substances. Then you went home and dumped it. Imagine you, a an hunter killed an animal and then kept it till it rotten. Say, because it, it doesn't look precious to you. You don't trivialize revelations, you don't trivialize truths, you don't waste what you had in God's house. I made up my mind very early in life. I will not listen to a someone I'm not ready to do something about. Why waste my time? So that I impress you that I have listened. I, 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 call, I call different men of God. I have listened to someone like 1,000. I have listened to this one 500. Then the took uh, quantity in terms of computer language is about 60 gig. And your life is one byte. Who are you impressing? Lift up your hands and say, Lord. The Bible says the word of God calls. It rebooks in righteousness every aspect of my life that needs a change change them this morning address my life with your word make me a better person may I never be the same again thank you in Jesus name we pray Asian words ever true changing me and changing you we are the you see the highest form of spiritual communication is sound that's why you hear the songs of solomon the psalms of David, the lamentations of the prophet the song of moses the song of miriam you have you sometimes you go to a secret place you pray, oh God, do this in my family, do this in my family, do this and do this, do this, change my story, do this one, do that one. And then when you are done, you just stay, you are tired at that point. And you are wandering in thought. And suddenly, a song just comes to your spirit. You are getting a prophetic word. Are we following? Are we follow How many of you have experienced that? Because some of you think you want to hear, hello, hello, my son. I'm giving to you spiritual understanding. A song will just well out of your spirit. Stephaniah 3.17 The Bible says, He bruised over us with singing. That's the highest form of spiritual communication because it needed to be decoded. Did you see that? He will joy over us with what? With singing. 
you understand? So you just be, you say, I'm doing retreat. Three days, you didn't dream any dream. Nightmare, daymare, you had none. All you are just hearing in your spirit is a song. That's the response. Your job is to listen. You think you are singing a song to someone. But you are talking to yourself. You can't be able to Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. That's the baptism of long suffering. If what God is saying is that continue like this. <laughs> Just be blessing you. <laughs> Tell your soul to keep on. <laughs> Do we understand that? So songs are highly spiritual. And every, every minister of the gospel will, will be able to summon spiritual realities based on the way he encountered God. I pray, Lord. But my encounter with God most of the times in the secret place are true worship. So for instance, if a man of God encountered God very much with prayer, the likes of our father, Apostle John Sleeman, and many of them, when they want to stir up spiritual realities in an atmosphere, then they stand up. Then you see the cloud begins to change. There are great men who encounter God through the world. Men like um, Pastor Sam, they mean men like um, great, great men, great teachers of the they begin to share God's word to you and the cloud of his glory fill the atmosphere. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then there are men who encountered him through the realms of what? Worship. When they want to um, um, stir up his presence, they just pick up songs. Do you understand that? And I will not keep silent and I will yes. As long as I love you, I will always worship you. See, see when they do that, then you see the same cloud of His presence in the atmosphere. Are we getting understanding now? So your job is to understand the platform. You, you get that? I pray, Lord. Those around me, you know you pray. I'm not saying I pray, now you pray. Because you can't survive around my life without prayers. Five days stretch, stop six months. We've done non-stop six months vigils. Not in the bid of maybe the person don't want to use prayer. And if we say we should pray now. I don't know how far it will go. Do you understand that? But the, everybody can summon the atmosphere of God based on the cloud to which they got it. Do we understand that? Uh -huh. So that's why you see many ministers who understand the glory realm like to sing a lot. Alright? And what is singing? Singing is just the word of God with melody. Prayer is the word of God without melody. I'll give you an example. The word of God says, Our excellence is your name in all the earth. And I begin to pray, Lord, I back a heart up by you, the heart hide. Our excellence is your name is all the Lord. And then I want to sing the same word of God. Our excellence is your name, O oh Lord. The same Bible. So yeah, it's the same thing. And the one with melody is actually better because anything that brings God into the cloud of the atmosphere is will make you get him very well. Number five. Your gifts and talents. Proverbs 18 and verse 9. You must still want well your gifts and talents. If you are called into the gift of music, exploit that gift and become so diligent in it. You can't be singing and nothing key. I'm just going, holy, holy, are you Lord God or what is wrong with you? Are we following? The Bible says, Proverbs, I said 14, is it 14, 9? 18 verse 9. He so that is slothful in his work is a brother to him that is a great waster. You are a waster of resources. What is purpose fulfillment? Purpose fulfillment is the ratio of endowment to expression. Purpose fulfillment is the ratio of capacity to exploration. I can be happy, yes, I have a mission. But is this the embeddlement or endowment of heaven in the inside of me? Is this how much I can go? That's when you say a man has fulfilled purpose. 
what is put into you versus how much of it you could what bring out of you and express to your word is the is the ratio is how to calculate purpose fulfillment be diligent in your gift you want to discover your gift number two you develop your gift number three you dignify your gift and number four you deal wisely with it you can't be be so gifted with a skill to to bad people and you turn their head to virtue you are now saying why why hey, come inside come inside i don't know why christians don't laugh patronizing themselves the small hair i'm managing now you should bab me so i do not see the remaining one let it's good that church people should be patronizing one another steal your gift polish the gift you discover it you what you develop it become a master and expert in it and then you what you dignify it give it color and then finally you learn how to deal wisely the problem is you want to jump to the last one so don't you do give it the best touch put your best in it if you give your assignment all it entails it will give you all it contains give it your best shot i spend hours to prepare one sermon hours i remember a meeting i went to some few years ago and i said okay i, I was just talking about the power of god and i said okay somebody just do you have anything there somebody just brought a spoon and i said stand where you are i command the spoon to go down bend the spoon was bending you get run out of church patient words ever true changing me we have come to open hearts on every ancient So you discover it, you do what to it again, you develop it, right? Then you dignify it, and finally you learn to what deal wisely. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7 that every gifting is given to profit without. But until you go through the first three process, don't be looking for the last one. Do we understand that? Give it your best shot. Give it your best shot. There is a walk in the walk. Do you understand that? There is something we do beyond the same. You must put yourself to it. I read a lot. Sometimes I'm done with 10 books. A few days ago, I sent almost four books to you guys. One of them, I said, finish in one week. And I don't care. It's your job to finish it. That's the only instruction I gave you. Four books, each of them is about one, is 500 pages. I said, finish this book in one week. All of them. And give me a response. One of my daughters I sent to you, I, to say, I don't know, you said I should finish it. I said, As everything you saw in that text is the correct instruction I wanted to give you. There's no mistake. So you don't need to ask a question. So when you now see the man speak, you are not wondering, oh God, the Holy Ghost is so, ah, ah, out of the abundance of the heart, the man speak. I have put a lot inside. A lot is inside. If I've not read in this year alone from January to this one, at least, the least I can call, maybe 15,000 books between January and now. Ask them, they know me. The least I will listen to a sermon per day on an audio message or audio book should be 15 per day. This is not an eating life. Those around me see it. Like he said, the Bible says, Grace empowers us to do much work. So develop your gift. Still want it well. Don't waste it. I don't know how much I will live on the earth. The every opportunity I have is to put what is inside me to my world every opportunity I have I don't know so I can't be living life as if I have 1000 years to live I have to bring out put myself you won't know how much you can do till you stretch yourself some of us, I remember those days in God, see the first time I heard somebody say the person prays 6 hours <laughs> oh that's the song you will sing you know something like magic to you you pray six hours say god how do they do it 
So I started. I thought that in my message, cultivating the lifestyle of prayer. I started like that. First day, 30 minutes, I off. And I put song to continue the prayer. Now you put your fellow Sunday song in the background. Then you off. You say, six hours you are going. But 30 minutes you are actually off. What work you is the alarm that six hours is over. Then you stand up say, Ka -ka -be no nasuya. Jesus, we pray. Then you move. <laughs> we started like that too. But we kept doing it. Because there are three processes to become a master of anything. The first process is what? Habit. The second process is what? No, the first process is discipline. The second process is habit. Then the third process is what? Passion. Everybody you see that is a master, even in smoking, even in drunkenness, went through this process. They started ah, ah, discipline, but they forced themselves. Discipline is doing what you not normally do so that you get what you not ordinarily get. They force themselves. Then over time, it now become what? An habit, what in English what we call addiction. You don't have option. Your hand will be shaky. You have to smoke. That's how it is. The prayer become an addiction. Then later, it become what? A passion. What you now like to do. That's how the process began. That's how you become a master of anything from discipline where you stretch yourself. There was no spirit of prayer that I was just sitting there one day in my room and the teacher just hit me. Ba -gang! Then I. Ba -da 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 -da. No. We prayed to a point our ribs we pain us. Have you prayed and catch headache? It's also in the place of prayer I discovered certain revelation that prayer bets hunger. Not that is a spiritual hunger. One time I was looking for it. I said, Lord, why do people pray and they are hungry like this? You found out that anytime you go to church, you'll be very hungry after service. You can stay in a whole full day and not feel hungry. But if it's church, you enter. You that day to look like they remove your whole life. And I read Acts chapter 10 when Peter was praying on top on top of one a roof. The Bible said, and he became very hungry. Now stop praying now calm down. Say, Please move my poof of fire. Then you now hope. I said, well, not like that. I'm, you know, I'm saying this to you, sir. You know, we went through the, what you are facing. It was like that. But we stayed. We endured in it. And it became a passion for us. Just to make sure we develop what is in the inside of us. If what you do the best, be diligent. Number six, your strength. Still word your strength. Proverbs 31, verse 3 to 4. Still word your strength, your energy. Your physical energy should be preserved. In the journey of life, you need your physical energy. Even in spiritual matters, you need energy. Have you not read in the scripture, Luke 22, and the Bible says, and the Bible, Jesus said to them, the spirit is willing. So the problem is not from the spirit. The problem is from what? The flesh. Some of you is not as if you don't want to pray. You are tired. Your body can carry you again. No, be so. You must learn to steal all your strength. Push much of your strength in the area of your calling, the area of your passion and destiny. That should be what sucks more of your strength, what advances your life. Look at Lamb uh, being advised by his mother. He said, Give not your strength unto women nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. So you can distribute your strength. Some of you, you use your strength for movies. There's nothing you have not watched. Seven hours! You put a screen. Number seven. Steward your health. It is better to be healthy than to be healed. Steward your health. Most of the health conditions people have today did not start today. It was the abuse of their health few years ago. If you don't learn to eat your food like medicine, one day you will eat medicine as food. May you not find yourself in that condition. You will be handicapped to achieve things in life. Your health can affect your productivity. Take care of it. Don't joke with that part of it. When you need to sleep, sleep. When you need to eat, eat. Some of you are battling all sides. No spiritual attack. Is an abuse on your health. Do we understand that? If your resources, learn to manage your resources well. If a house is given to you, put it in good order. Manage it well. Resources in your hand, manage it, steward it well. 
knowing fully well that what, what everything in your hands should what multiply they should be better than it came in your hand do you understand that do we understand that number nine your relationship and access your relationship and access proverbs verse one say when you are set before a ruler be careful some of you god has brought quality people around your life you abused it you abused it you quarreled with them listen when great men come to your level never conclude that you have climbed to their height i repeat what i said again when great men choose to come to your level don't conclude that you have now become climbed to their level you abuse this abuse this say i will not call him if you don't call me really every relationship is a realm of possibility god has opened to you be careful how you manage them because you can lose them every access god gives to you be careful how you manage them on your way to the top the things you will see they are human beings if you abuse anyone it limits where you go to the next place be careful manage it honor people just learn how to invest genuinely into relationships and do the right thing number 10 your time psalm 90 and verse 12 is a teach us to number our days that we may apply our heart unto what wisdom ephesians 5 and verse 16 we say redeeming the time for the days are evil one of the commodity that is very scarce on the earth is time how you manage your time is how you manage your life time is not money time is life you can't spend all your time surfing the net and what you see listen everything you see in the internet is simply called show business two things happen in show business number one you'll be shown something and number two the person will make a business from it i repeat again everything you see on the internet is called what show business and two things happens there a show and what a business so they put forth a show for you to come see and from that thing you are seeing they are making a business out of it do we understand that so tell yourself i will put in my own effort into my destiny and people will watch me like this i can't spend i'm not saying you don't watch people but i can spend all my time doing that these people i'm watching have put in their best into what they are doing that's why people can watch them i won't give all that of my time to it there are those who read history those who see history being made before them and there are those that makes history you have to choose which category you want to belong to are we following learn these things don't be a waster don't be a waster of everything around your life don't be a waster of your time here don't waste it give it your best shot anything you are doing give it your best shot maximize your time get to work you can't stay and say eh, why have you not why are you not doing anything i'm thinking i'm planning planning is important but you can't spend all your life doing that well done is better than well said do you understand that the bible says whatsoever your hand find it to do it didn't say your purpose your hand should find to do so it will always start with what whatsoever it's in the midst of the whatsoever you find the what you are to do whatsoever because believers deceive themselves with so many spirituality so i'm praying about it i'm trying to discover discover what whatsoever in the midst of it you discover the what do we understand that don't waste your time don't waste your life don't waste anything around you make sure it multiplies make sure it grows make sure it improves it gets better people should not give you things and be crying that they gave it to you i give you my research right now i won't see one hand why i remember a laptop i gave to somebody one time and he spoiled the laptop and i was angry he started telling people that i'm angry that it's laptop so i should be smiling that you spoiled it if i match my own like that will you have one to borrow if i kept it in a bad position way will you have one to collect learn to avoid wastage by all means avoid wastage by all means there are things you don't need now don't buy them don't buy them go and check your house there are things you have never used them go and sell it that thing is a liability as far as i'm concerned go and sell it and use the money to do something profitable for your life don't be buying things especially ladies your back like them clothes you will never wear 
just need to you know there is this especially for ladies there is this joy that your bags are plenty now i'm not saying you shouldn't dress well are we following because even if you don't dress well you're a waster you're abusing your body as a woman being that's why you should you should dress well and dress smart is that okay very very smart are we together lift up your hands where you are standing and say lord help my life change me from today i want to be always deal with every form of waste in my life every form of waste lord deal with it in my life deal with it take it away address it over give me courage to stop every form of waste in my life thank you holy spirit name we pray the Lord bless and keep you the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and the Lord release upon you the baptism of saints the baptism of wisdom take away every wastage from your life in the name of Jesus every activity of the empty as wasters around your life I waste them now everyone that is around your life as a friend and use activities to waste your destiny waste your time you are in a relationship and that person's job is to waste your years i declare and i declare and end to it now in the name of jesus because there are people that are wasters how will you date a lady for nine years and after nine years you say you want to pray about it to hear whether she's god's will you are stupid And if you are a brother here, you do that nonsense. Stop it. Stop it. Don't play with people's life. If you are not serious around the lady, tell her. Are we together, please? They are years wasters. Now the lady is old, jumping from one prayer house to another. Because one, one waster was attached to her destiny. Waster. Some of you might just come innocently. You are going through life, especially fresh students. And one wrong person just come attach your life. That's the downfall of your life. Everything around your life is scattering. Good. So one of the deliverance you may need in life is to separate from certain people. It's an impartation. It's a deliverance. I pray anyone around your life that is not advancing the course of your destiny, but is there to waste your time, waste your waste your energy, waste your moments, waste your years, waste your destiny. I decree an end now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say divine help. Your health is sound. Your health is made perfect. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I pray that you will grow in the wisdom of God. You will grow more and more in God. You will know Him better. I release fresh fire upon your heart. It will blaze for God in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the impartation of divine hunger for God in the inside of you. Every yoke of addiction, every hold of a strong habit is broken off you now in the name of Jesus. And I take authority over the spirit of infirmity of my voice you are sick in your body i release healing now Amen. in the name of jesus i command the, the discomfort be gone 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 in the name of jesus may your week be blessed enjoy strange favors enjoy financial miracles may those that will bless you remember you may you receive help from unexpected quarters in the name of jesus may god make you happy what will bring you joy what will bring your family joy may god make happen for you in the name of jesus that long awaited miracle long awaited testimony i declare and i declare this week they come true in the name of jesus every way i met you the last time i came to this point the way i'm seeing you now will be the least they will ever hear about you 
every condition and pain that you came to this house with and my eyes set on you you stood under this cloud and this meeting i declare and i declare after now what you will be sharing will be testimonies i decree to be testimonies in the name of jesus thank you our father